Hey everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. This is Jeff Palmer, the CEO and, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Uh, we're a natural, plant-based fitness nutrition company. All right, so this video is for information on educational purposes only. is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So Popeye was right about spinach. It does make you stronger. Um, it makes you healthier in a lot of different ways. And I, I go over some of those different ways in some of my other Clean Machine Lives. Check out the Popeye one if you want to learn more about how spinach actually helps. But what about olive oil? His wife uh, or partner, I should say. I don't know. They had a kid together. Who knows? <laughs> Whatever's good with me. The family, right? A little sweet pea, too, as well. Okay, so what about olive oil? All, right, all jokes aside, there's a lot of controversy about oil. And there's definitely within the whole food plant-based uh, community, um, a lot of um, people who uh, think very strongly, <laughs> very passionately, that uh, no oil should be um, consumed at all. Okay, so let's, let's start out with the definition, oil. Uh, oil, when they are referring to it, and they meaning the plant-based doctors like uh, Esselstyn or, or um, Clapper or some of the other plant-based doctors, they're talking about isolated oil. And because there's oil, which is definitely, it's just a name for liquid fat. All right, 100% of the calories in oil are fat. Oil is fat. Okay, so let's uh, understand that the difference between solid fat is saturated fat, solid at room temperature. Liquid oil is liquid at room temperature, which is mostly mono and polyunsaturated fats or unsaturated fats. So most plant-based oils, with the exception of coconut oil, which can tend to be uh, higher in saturated fat, are liquid at room temperature as opposed to being solid at room temperature. Now, there's a big difference in the way the body behaves and utilizes saturated fats compared to mono and especially polyunsaturated fats, more commonly known as omegas. Uh, omega-369. So those are the PUFAs, or polyunsaturated fatty acids. Um, omega-3 and 6 are the two required for human nutrition. They're called essential fatty acids. It's essential that we get them from our diet. All right. So that aside, um, is there a place for oils? Now, what we're talking about is isolated oils, and, and in this particular uh, case, a plant isolated oil. All right, so I'm not going to wade too deep into the argument. I agree with uh, most of the uh, plant-based doctors that if you are in an advanced disease state, say cardiovascular disease, coronary heart disease, uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, there's no real need to consume oil. And you're probably going to be better off based upon the research by not consuming it. But what about the rest of us? What about those who don't have advanced disease states, are healthy, are 100% plant-based or mostly plant-based, and are exercising? Those are all factors that may ameliorate the potential negative effects of oils. Now, in particular, I'm talking about olive oil. And why do I single out olive oil as opposed to most of the other oils like canola oil, soy oil, or corn oil, or many of the other oils. Uh, uh, olive oil tends to be, in research, shows up in the Mediterranean diet. Mediterranean diets are associated with longevity and health. As a matter of fact, most of the research has pointed to that's one of the best diets to consume. Mediterranean diet is a diet of mostly plants, some fish, and high amounts of calories coming from olive oil. So the, the thing that most of the plant-based doctors have, have been talking about is saying, well, they're getting most of the benefits from the plants that they're consuming, high in polyphenols, high in fiber, high in micronutrients, uh, high in phytonutrients that actually may help um, offset some of those things. And that all may be true, but I wanna talk about just the olive oil itself because Looking at other studies, you can see that uh, oil can oxidize. 
Now, when oil oxidizes, it picks up a free radical oxygen. That's what oxidizing is. It, it grabs a free radical oxygen, and then it can be a carrier, and that free radical oxygen can damage both cell structure and DNA. When it does that, it can disrupt the endothelial lining of the arteries, the veins running through there, and has been associated with uh, cardiovascular um, disease or infarctions, small um, uh, degradation um, or of the endothelial linings, the lining that lines our blood vessels and arteries. Okay. So that aside, let's take a look. Why does uh, olive oil stand out a little bit amongst all these oils? Why is it different? Why is it showing different results in studies compared to some of the other plant oils? It's because it has a cold pressed. Let me let me clarify. Cold pressed. Um, uh, let me actually get my notes here. Okay, um, cold pressed um, and uh, extra virgin. So not using any chemicals, not using any heat. Remember heat with oil can cause or accelerate oxidation of the oil. So as soon as you isolate an oil from its natural whole food plant state, you're removing it from its, its uh, uh, all the plant, which has all these natural polyphenols and antioxidants but it's not as much in uh, olive oil. And why is that? Because when you cold press olive oil, it takes with it some of those uh, polyphenols, which are powerful antioxidants. One in particular I'm gonna be talking about because there's some amazing research on it. It's called hydroxytyrosol. So hydroxytyrosol is very anti-inflammatory. Now, most particular oils, once you remove the oil from its natural antioxidant, polyphenol, and fiber-rich plant, once you isolate it from there, it doesn't have all those protective benefits to keep this oil from oxidizing, picking up a free radical oxygen. That's where it can become a problem. So it's not the oil per se, it's removing it from its whole food state because look, we eat oil in lots of different foods, even oil, which is fats, right? Just another name for fat, except we call liquid fat oil, and we call solid fat fat. I don't know why it's all fat. It's the same thing. It's just one's in a liquid state and one's in a, a non-liquid state because of its amount of saturation. Okay, so once you remove it from that, it can start to oxidize unless there are antioxidants with that oil. And that's what olive oil is a little bit unique because one, it's generally cold pressed, two, it's virgin, so it's not using chemical or heat to get the extraction out. And three, it takes with it some powerful um, antioxidants. And how powerful are these antioxidants? Well, let's take a look at some of the research. So the first study I wanna uh, look at uh, is a recent study that actually just came out. Now, I want to preface this with this is an animal study. I do not support animal research, but I look at all studies. And oh my God, if some animals had to die to get this study, I, I at least want to do them the service of learning from what they gave their life up for. So I hope one day we move away from animal testing completely. There's in silico models, there is computer models, um, in silico meaning done in a computer. There are different modeling systems that can project things what's happening. There's human in vitro cells that we can do before even doing in vivo cells. In vitro meaning in just cells taken out of the body and put in a petri dish and see how they react. Uh, obviously in vivo, which means in a vivo living person, a whole person just doing studies is there, but you can't always just take biopsies, chunks of tissue out of people. So it's not always the best way to do research. So you, I look at all of the research data and try to extrapolate and understand, yes, we cannot always extrapolate animal data because what works in an animal may not work in a human being. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But we can all learn from what's going on if they're basic foundational physiological uh, mechanisms that are across a trans species. 
Um, and, and metabolism of oils is, is, is pretty close to that. So this first one uh, was looking at um, uh, uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen here first. Let's see. It was in uh, it's published this year, actually this month, 2022. If you're watching this later, I'm going to put everything in the comment section so that you can see it. I'll pull it up on the screen too as well, um, so everybody can take a look at. It. So this one is very recent. It was just this month, uh, published in uh, the Journal of Antioxidants. Um, so the study is uh, hydroxytyrosol, which is an active polyphenol found in olive oil. And this is extra virgin olive oil I'm talking about. So just to preface this, cold press extra virgin. So hoxy, the title of the study, hydroxytyrosol promotes mitochondrial function through activating mitophagy. Okay. So um, before we get into what is mitophagy, um, we'll just read the quote down below. And again, I'm prefacing this, this is a fish study, so take it with a grain of salt, but let's learn from this at least. So hydroxytyrosol, um, shortened to HT in most of the studies, is a key compound of extra virgin olive oil, which can exert beneficial effects on NAL, FLD, that is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That is the disease that usually predicates or is the precursor to a whole cascade of uh, undesirable effects in human body. Once the liver starts to become diseased by over accumulation of fat and toxins, it can set a chain reaction, which can lead to diabetes, can lead to hypertension, can lead to a whole bunch of other things. So this can actually exert beneficial effects on that as well as mit mitochondrial function. Now, mitochondrial function is very important. Mitochondria are, are um, uh, generators for all energy in the cells. When that mitochondria becomes defective, it stops producing as much energy. This can lower our body's ability to heal itself, repair itself, give us energy for other things. It becomes dysfunctional. So mitochondrial health is probably one of the biggest uh, indicators of how long somebody is going to live. The better their mitochondrial state, the better they are and more efficient and faster they are at healing, at repairing cells, at preventing DNA damage, a whole cascade. So this really starts. If you pick up any longevity magazine, you're probably gonna read number one primary thing is mitochondrial health. It's the manufacturing place for all energy in the human body. And it's really important to keep that. So what is mitophagy? Mito, meaning mitochondria, and tophagy, meaning turnover. So what the body needs to do is when it finds mitochondria that are damaged or dysfunctional or not producing uh, good uh, energy amounts or dysfunctioning and producing bad things, then the body needs to break that mitochondria down, turn it over, and replace it with new mitochondria. That's called mitochondria. Mit <laughs> Uh, mitophagy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain mitophagy, um, but you can read about more about mitophagy and why it's uh, so important to uh, anti-aging. I'll go ahead and put that up on the screen for this study too as well. Um, let's see, wait for it to come up. This is it. There it is. Okay, so mitophagy, an emerging role in aging and age associated diseases. Remember, once that mit mitochondria starts dysfunctioning, it can cause a cascade of negative events in the body, which can lead to disease. So mitophagy, or the breaking down and turning over and repairing and renewing new mitochondria is really an indicator of how long the species, the animal that, is, that has got that dysfunction is going to work. So I'll read it to you. So mitochondrial dysfunction constitutes, and this is direct quotes from the study, uh, constitutes one of the hallmarks of aging and is characterized by irregular mitochondrial morphology. That's dysfunction. Insufficient ATP, ATP production, that is not enough energy to actually do the healing and the repairing that the body needs. 
accumulation of mitochondrial DNA mutations. It's when the DNA actually starts just misfiring and, and starts uh, behaving improperly. And that's when it really needs to be broken down before it actually becomes damage inducing. And increased production of mitochondrial reaction uh, reactive oxygen species, ROS, or reactive oxygen species. Remember, that's an oxygen-free radical mo molecule that can go over and attach to things and actually start degrading, breaking down cell structures, damaging cell structures, even damaging DNA. Um, so this is really important to reduce that. And mitochondrial activities can actually help reduce reactive oxygen species when the mitochondria is functioning properly. So this is really important, not only for just energy and, and energy repair, but also in uh, some ad advanced disease states. So let's go ahead uh, again with this study. Mitophagy, a mitochondrial quality control mechanism, enabling the degradation of damaged and superfluous mitochondria prevents such detrimental effects and reinstates cellular homeostasis in response to stress. So when you stress, when you have stresses, whether it's bad food or emotional stress, psychological stress, physical stresses, like even working out, which is definitely a physical stress, you want to be able to respond to that stress really well. And by having healthy mitochondria, that's exactly what you do. To date, there is increasing evidence that mitophagy is significantly impaired in several human pathologies, disease states including aging, age-related diseases, and neurodegenerative disorders. That's where the brain function starts to decrease too because, it, because of poor mitophagy or cellular turnover. So this hydroxytyrosol is actually doing some really incredible stuff, not just being an antioxidant protecting against that, uh, that oil from oxidizing because when oil picks up that free radical oxygen that's when it can become very damaging what's cool is that it's not only protecting the fat the oil itself right it's not only protecting that from oxidizing it's protect and then it goes into the system is released and starts to protect and reduce um ldl cholesterol and ldl cholesterol is the bad quote unquote, bad cholesterol, but it really gets bad when it starts to oxidize. So oxidized LDL cholesterol has been shown to be a significant indicator to uh, brain damage. And I just did a, a Facebook Live all about that. You can see the horrific images of what people's brain arteries look like with high oxidized LDL. I talk about more of that in the study. But this hydroxytyrosol that is found in um, uh, cold pressed uh, extra virgin olive oil actually prevents that oxidation of the LDL. Not only does that, it lowers the LDL and raises the HDL. So it's got multiple positive effects that are going on that can prevent neurodegeneration, uh, can help accelerate uh, mitochondrial turnover called mitophagy, which can help us live longer and age better. So when I hear about, oh, don't do any oils, I'm like, yeah, but you're missing out on some of these benefits potentially. Yes, you don't have to consume the oil, you can consume the whole olive and get the hydroxytyrosol as well, that's a good approach to it. But what I'm saying is, are we necessarily avoiding something that could have a lots of positive influence on this? So let's keep looking at um, uh, the studies. Um, so this next study I'm going to put up is, is even more powerful of what um, hydroxytyrosol can do. Let's put this up on the screen. Sorry, this is a little slow getting these um, posted on there today. I don't know why. Uh, let's show it. There we go. Okay, so this study is hydroxytyrosol inhibits cholangiocarcinoma. It's, it's a form of cancer tumor growth. And in vivo and in vitro, that means in, in a whole being and in cell studies. So 
this is directly from the the quote is directly from this this hydroxytyrosol from olive oil is derived from virgin olive oil has recently been reported to inhibit the pro proliferation of various types of human cancer cells okay this is a big deal uh obviously cancer rates are starting to creep up and almost catch the amount of the number one uh, killer in the United States, which is uh, heart disease. So when we're looking at the rates of cancer is starting to skyrocket and potentially become the number one killer of Americans in the United States, you've got to wonder, OK, well, when you've got this amazing polyphenol that is really uniquely uh, high amounts in uh, olive oil and olives, you know, is this is this a good thing to be reducing it or removing it from the diet out of this fear of, of oil, liquid oil? Um, remember, the main reason people are saying don't consume oil is because it's oxidative, oxidative negative things. It's when you say take a walnut, for example, when you take a walnut, squeeze it in your fingers, just squeeze the walnut itself. Then look at your fingers and what do you see? Oil. Okay, so that is just simple mechanical pressing of a walnut is squeezing out the oil. What do you think happens when you chew down on their food? Yeah, you're squeezing out oil. That's the same as cold pressed olive oil. You're cold pressing it in your mouth. If you take an olive and put it in your mouth, you're going to chew it. And that's going to cold press olive oil out of the olive. So you know, when you look at it that way, it looks kind of silly. What you don't want, though, is you don't want oils that are removed completely from their ox antioxidant protectiveness, which is what you find typically in whole foods. So the general concept of staying away from um, isolated uh, oils uh, because they don't have antioxidants in them is not as true when you're looking at olive oil, which has this really powerful antioxidant. Not only is it an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, it is actually anti-cancer, antiviral, antibacterial. I mean, this, this polyphenol is really an amazing uh, polyphenol. Plus, it's protective. It's hepatoprotective or liver protective. So it prevents the buildup. They've had animal studies that show when you do high fat diet, but you include olive oil, it reduces the negative impact of the high fat diet on the liver and on uh, oxidative damage in the tissues. That's how powerful the hydroxytyrosol is. Um, let's look at the next study. Here we go. I'll put this one up on the screen as always, too. Uh, these studies will always have their title of the study first, then the link, and then the exact quote. Um, if I make any notes in this, you'll see that in parentheses, so that you know in, I mean, in, um, yeah, in parentheses, no, in, uh, yeah, there's, uh, their quotes are in, uh, parentheses, mines are in brackets. Okay, so that's how you can tell if it's my commentary or if it's direct quote from them. I'd always give it in quote marks, quotation marks. Okay, so uh, the study is hydroxytyrosol and its potential therapeutic effects. So what they're looking at here is actually taking the hydroxytyrosol from the olives itself and then using it as a supplementation uh, to get it to therapeutic effects. What's the difference between therapeutic versus maintenance? Therapeutic is an application towards someone who is already in a diseased or advanced disease state. So when you do that, you have a certain amount in food, but if you take it out and concentrate it in beer, then you can deliver a high amount. And why would you do a high amount? Because it may take that to overcome the disease state that is in the uh, human in this case. Okay, as one of the major polyphenols, these are quote from the study, as one of the major polyphenols present in olive oil, virgin olive oil specifically, hydroxytyrosol shows a variety of pharmacological activities such as antioxidant properties, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, 
neuroprotective, protecting the brain, and beneficial effects on the cardiovascular system. Now, this is not something that any of the doctors or researchers should whatever say about some of the other oils or fats, that this is unique to this hydroxytyrosol polyphenol that is in um, uh, a ver extra virgin cold pressed olive oil. Um, so just pretty amazing. And, you know, it's, it's so powerful. Um, one uh, group of researchers said, well, if it's this powerful when we ingest it, what about just actually putting it on our skin topically? Would it, would it have any beneficial effects? If it's this powerful at reducing free radicals, and sure enough, look at this. So this study is anti-inflammatory and anti-aging effects of hydroxytyrosol on human dermal fibroblast. These are human skin cells taken off of the human, put in a Petri dish, and then use them so they can expose um, potentially dangerous amounts of UV radiation, what you get from the sun. So it's acting like an actual sunscreen. So the conclusion of the study, through this research, we demonstrate that hydroxytyrosol has effects on anti-inflammatory and anti-aging in human skin cells damaged by UVA, that's sunlight uh, radiation. So here it is even a protecting against sunlight radiation. I mean, this is phenomenal. This is, you can take it internally, you can take it uh, topically, and it's still being that beneficial to humans. Uh, the ancient Greeks used to smear olive oil all over their body all the time. And hey, they were right <laughs> centuries ago to do so because it's protecting them against UV radiation damage and damage the UVA can go all the way down to the cellular structure and into the DNA and disrupt the DNA forming cancer cells. So again, we're seeing amazing uh, structures. Now, a lot of the research, um, I, I'm going to put up this uh, next study, but a lot of the research um, on olive oil was done as a comparative. And many of the plant-based doctors will say, this is not fair research because anytime you substitute an animal product with a plant product, you're probably gonna get beneficial health effects <laughs> either way. And, and some of that is true because you're consuming more plants and less animals, less of the damaging stuff, more of the good stuff. So this is a substitution study, consumption of olive oil and risk of total and cause specific mortality among US adults. So this was looking at Americans specifically, and they were in substitution analysis, replacing 10 grams per deciliter of margarine, butter, mayonnaise, and dairy fat with the exact equivalent amount of fat from calories of olive oil and it was associated with a 34%, up to 34% lower risk of total, that's all causes of disease, and cause-specific mortality. So even regardless of what type of cause of disease state it was doing, up to 34% lower risk just by substituting out those animal-based products, dairy, mayonnaise, butter, with olive oil. That's a that's a big chunk. That's not a small margin. Um, so, but you know, many of the plant-based doctors will say, yeah, but that's you're just substituting a bad animal fat for a good plant fat. It's not looking at it. And that is absolutely true. And I think because there's so much research showing that, well, then olive oil can be for those consuming a standard American diet, can be a great substitution if it really does truly reduce your risk of all causes of mortality by, by a third. Oh, heck yeah, sign me up for that. Look, we're all not on a perfect diet, right? So there are different people who can get different advantages based on where they're at in their dietary choices. So I think we need to make room and not be out there saying, no one should be eating any oil. Well, that's just not doable by most people in modern society. It's it's not. It's not a reality. I hope we get there someday. I hope everybody gets rid of oil someday. But until then, 
there might be good, better, best if you are going to consume fats from their oil states or fats, animal versus plant. So clearly the research is showing that when you're consuming saturated animal fats, the risk for disease states is very big compared to that. I'm gonna put up this study that really shows this. And I did a whole uh, Facebook Live on this too as well. So this is a very complicated issue and it's really difficult to tease out what is the contributing benefactor and what is the contributing negative uh, effects when looking at population studies. Um, but all that in mind, let's just take a look at uh, Let's see if I can get this in here. Uh, it's being a little, I'm going to just go ahead and read it to you. So the name of the study is Dietary Fat Intake and the Risk of Stroke Results from Two Prospective Cohort Studies. Um, so this uh, is was a big study looking at two different studies, uh, 27 years worth of data, 117,000 healthcare professionals. So this is a big study. Yes, it's epidemiological, meaning looking just at, okay, recording what they ate and looking at over time and making some estimates and stuff. So it's not the best science. I, I get that, but it is a huge study. So it does give us a good example of what may be contributing to it. Okay, so the results of this study, conclusions, a higher intake of vegetable fat polyunsaturated and vegetable oil was associated with a reduced risk of stroke, but high intake of non-dairy animal fat, total red meat and processed red meat was associated with increased risk of stroke. So this is showing the difference between the saturated fats that are found in mostly in animals and the mono and polyunsaturated fats that are found in uh, plants and even said that vegetable oil itself and vegetable fat itself reduced the effect of reduced the risk of stroke while consuming animal fats increased the risk of stroke. So there's a big difference between the fat that's in animals, mostly saturated fat, and the fats that are in uh, plants. So when you are trading out these animal saturated fats, for mono and polyunsaturated fats from plants, you are going to most likely see some improvement and benefits. Is it perfect? No, but if you can move in a direction that is doable for you, that's why I think just eliminating all oil when it's in so much of our processed foods and packaged foods, every time you go out to dinner at a restaurant, you're gonna have oil most likely unless you find a one that can cook with no oil, which is extremely rare. Um, and, and, then, and then just trying to be around friends and family and stuff like that and eat without, you know, creating a whole bunch of food stress. It's like, oh, I can't eat that. Oh, I can't eat that. Oh, I can't eat that. What can I eat? Oh, it sucks. I'll have to eat it. just another dry salad again. You know, that kind of emotional and mental stress is not healthy for you either. Stress is a killer. And when you're stressed all about your diet, and stressed about, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. That's not healthy for you either. And when you're looking at something like olive oil, just by using a little bit of olive oil and saying, hey, this is better off, well then great. Is it improvement over the animal uh, fats? Yes. Is it improvement over even some of the plant oils? I think so because of the hydroxytyrosol, which is unique to olive oil. So is there good, better, best? Yes. I am not saying that everybody should go out and drink a gallon of olive oil. Obviously, <laughs> that's that's not the case. So let's let's take a look finally at the Harvard study, which caused a lot of controversy, especially amongst the plant-based doctors um, who are down on oil. This was a Harvard study, and it looked at more than ninety thousand healthcare workers. So uh, after 28 years, so again, another huge study. And uh, after adjusting for all known risk factors and other dietary factors, research, researchers found that participants who consumed more than a half a tablespoon a day of olive oil 
were 17% likely, less likely to die of cancer, 18% less likely to die of respiratory disease, 19% less likely to die of cardiovascular disease and all other causes, and 29% less likely to die of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's compared with those who never or very rarely consumed olive oil. So is it the hydroxytyrosol that is making a difference? I say it's potentially yes. I, I, I know I'm not gonna say any with any certainty, but the, the amount of studies and research that is showing the benefits of hydroxytyrosol that is found in olives, and, and again, it doesn't have to be olive oil, it can be the whole olives yourselves. I love eating olives, me personally, um, but look, let's 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 uh, get down to the um the nitty-gritty here um so you look at uh, some of the doctors out there especially esselstyn saying not in, not only no oils but no nuts or seeds i'm sorry i just can't there's way too many studies out there showing the beneficial effects of nuts in the diet actually it was found to be one of the most um, uh, common foods to be eaten as far as improving longevity. So I'm just not sold on that. Yes, should you uh, keep it to a small amount of nuts? I totally agree with that. Uh, too too many nuts in a in a day is probably not a good thing either. So let's let's recap this. One, oil is 100% calories from fat. Oil is just another name for fat. There are good fats and there are less good fats. Um, there is solid fat and there is liquid fat. Saturated fat is solid and the other is liquid. We shouldn't say no oil. We should be saying no isolated oil. That is oils that are taken naturally from the whole food state and now are isolated because they can oxidize. They can pick up oxygen free radicals and cause damage. You want them with those polyphenols and antioxidants to protect the oil from oxidizing. That's where it can be a real problem. Because look, there are fats in almost everything, even fruits like avocados are have plenty of fats, but even uh, small amounts of fats in fruits and even dark greens have a small amount of fats in them. Uh, the, the clean green protein, the lentine I have has, has uh, 35% of your entire day's worth of fats in it, but it's good fats, the polyunsaturated fats, the omega-3s that are in there, high in ALA in a dark green. That's right. Dark greens giving your body 35% of the omegas that you need. That's good fat. So it's, yes, you could take that dark green and squeeze it and pull out the oil. The oil is in there. It's just in its whole food state protected by antioxidants. And that's what makes this uh, unique. So number two, the source of the fat matters, plant versus animal. Animal fats, mostly saturated, can cause damage, including heart attack, strokes, and other diseases, uh, fatty liver syndrome, diabetes, the whole works. Plants, mostly polyunsaturated, monounsaturated fats, much more health promoting for you. The um, type of fat matter, saturated versus unsaturated, mono and polyunsaturated fats. The amount of fat matters. So nothing in excess is good for you. Too much protein is not good for you. Too much fat is not good for you. Too many carbs are not good for you. Too many anything. Too much water can kill you. There's actually a term for that that actually uh, dilutes the uh, uh, necessary, um, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, hydration molecules in your body that can cause the body to dysfunction. You can even die from too much water. So too much of anything is not a good idea. That's why I don't like these terms, low fat or high protein. It shouldn't be low or high anything. It should be the right amount. <laughs> That's what you shouldn't be doing low anything. You should be doing the right amount of everything, the right amount of carbs, the right amount of fats, the right amount of particular fats, the right amount of particular proteins, plant proteins instead of animal proteins. So the amount really matters. 
oxidation matters. Number six, number five, oxidation matters. So consuming a diet high in antioxidants and polyphenols can help prevent the oxidation, including polyphenols like hydroxytyrosol in the olive oil or olives themselves. Number six, do the health benefits, ask yourself this, do the health benefits outweigh the positive, possible negative health effects? So are those negative health effects in isolation are when they're combined with other polyphenols and foods in our diet, does this prevent the negative effects or at least reduce the negative effects that our body can recuperate and repair and adjust from it? What you don't want is to be in a state where the body is not able to heal and repair itself. And that's when it becomes a real problem. And that's because the standard American diet is way too high in animal products, way too high in animal protein, way too high in animal fats. That's where it becomes and way too high in simple processed uh, carbohydrates. What you need is those good polyunsaturated fats. You need that good plant protein that's lower in methionine to prevent uh, cancer creation. You need that good complex carbohydrates to feed the body and feed the, the fuel source for the brain. That's what matters. So um, next, the polyphenols, antioxidants, phytonutrients should be considered. Um, you can't just take oil and say all oil is bad. It's not true if there are other phytoactive compounds within that oil. It may not have the same effects. That's what I'm asking you to look at. Look at the research and make that decision for yourself. I'm not saying you should eat any oil. You're probably better off consuming no oil at all. And that's okay. But I'm saying if you are a person that says, yeah, but my wife or my husband or my spouse or my family or my coworkers, and then fill in the blank, well, then can you make some concessions and it still be okay? And if so, which are the better options to choose? If you are going to do oil, then olive oil may be a better option because of that hydroxytyrosol that's in there, giving you health benefits that you won't get when you're using other plant-based oils or other sources of fat. So choosing one that's right for you, if you choose to consume oils, might be a better option for you. Ideally, if we can all move to getting away from um, isolated anything uh, and just doing whole food plants, that'll be great. <laughs> and when we get there, we can all celebrate because we're all going to be really, really healthy. But until we get there, I think we have to make room for people to make decisions that are at least better than where they're at because that could improve life. I don't believe in going skipping right to absolutisms or hyper-restrictive diet choices and recommending that, you're setting people up to fail. I tried that, it didn't work, I'm not gonna do it again. Forget that, that was too hard. I couldn't hang out with my friends and eat anything. I was never comfortable. I don't wanna hear that. What I wanna hear is, here are the options, good, better, best. Try to make the better options in each given circumstance that you have in this real world reality so that you can make better decisions at least for you and not and until you are in a place and in a society that actually supports you making those best decisions or if you're really hardcore go for it all the way i'm not telling you not to what i'm telling is that there are good better best options so that's important so also what is your individual health and activity level this is important I consume a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I consume what most people would consider a higher amount of fats because I work out like a demon. I am burning calories all the time. Just doing carbohydrates, I burn through those too quickly and I drop fat too quickly and then I drop muscle because my body actually starts burning that up. Because I'm in a high active adult, even at almost 60 years of age, I am work out with intensity because I love it. I enjoy it. So those fats actually give me more calories, calories that support it, but my body is burning them up. Now, if you are a sedentary person and you are an unhealthy diet, putting that same amount of fat in your body is not going to do good things for you. And that's because you're not burning up that 
fat and using it as energy. You're actually letting that fat circulate your bloodstream where it can pick up free radical ox oxygen and do damage to you. You are not exercising to move that stuff through your system and move it out. This is why looking at the individual and then uh, suggesting the right diet for them, that's what I, I believe in. So I personally, because I work out so intensely and so often, can get away with a lot more fat consumption and not have it detrimental effects. Someone who is sedentary, who is not working out on a regular basis or not working out with intensity should not do this. So it's unique to the individual. How healthy are you? Do you have an advanced disease state? Then no, you should not be doing oil. If you have a healthy body and you are in a good place with your nutrition and your diet, and you are exercising, is fat going to have the same effect on your body as someone who's not? No, it's going to have a very different effect in your body. So keep that in mind that you may not need to be as restrictive as you think you would and can enjoy some of the foods that you like within reason. So those, and number 10, those with advanced health conditions like cardiovascular disease, I agree with Eselston and, and T. Colin Campbell and Dr. Clapper and many of the doctors are saying, if you have those disease states, should you eliminate oil? I, I am in the camp of saying, yes, I'm not a doctor, so I can't make that recommendation. Remember, uh, I'm just talking about what I would do in that circumstance. Yes, 100%. But when you're talking about somebody with an advanced disease state, you need, you require to save their life much more uh, advanced and restrictive measures to make sure that they can rebalance, heal themselves, and, and reduce the amount. If it's a small amount of infarction or, 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 you know, if it's just making a small effect, can our bodies recuperate? Yes, we're an amazing self-healing machine. We're doing that all the time. Uh, look, we're we're living life with a stressful, stressful life, stressful work, stressful jobs, stressful money situations, stressful relationships. We got stresses all over the place. Um, so that's a reality of it. But we can still live a good, healthy, successful life up to 100 years or more, even with all that stress. Why? Because our body is busy healing and repairing itself. When you put the proper nutrition and you move some, just try to exercise at least some, you can greatly improve that ability to anti-age. And that's why I call out these amazing plant phytoactive chemicals like hydroxytyrosol that's in olive oil that can have some tremendous health benefits across the board, anti-cancer, anti-inflammation, antioxidant, antiviral, antibacterial, um, pro-neurodegenerative, uh, liver protective, uh, reducing, uh, it, helping the body accelerate the fat burning process. So the hydroxytyrosol by accelerating mitochondria. Mitochondria is what turns fat into ATP, energy. So by having healthier mitochondria, which is also increased when you work out. <laughs> so uh, those who work out regularly and with intensity have much more mitochondria. And that mitochondria means they're producing more energy. That means it's burning up that fat and utilizing that fat and preventing it from oxidizing in the bloodstream. So all within context, um, I want people to stop buying into these fear dogmas of you can't, you can't, you can't, and start looking at this a little bit more objectively. What is the research telling us? What is my current state? Are there differences? Are there subtleties? Are there nuances that I should pay attention to and maybe not be so restrictive on my dietary choices that cause me stress, cause me social skill issues and things like this? And understand how I can gravitate to better, good, better, best as I am going along and as society changes and improves proves these things as well. Yes, if you're living on uh, a desert island with all the rest of the vegans that are there um, and you can eat totally uh, whole food, plant-based, then awesome. That's a beautiful thing. We're not. We're in society. We're in, uh, you know, we're working in indoor buildings and stuff. We've got to pay a little bit closer attention to our nutrition and our cho choices. Um, 
So lastly, I want to leave you with um, ideally the uh, benefits of uh, olives in their whole food state um, and that whole black olives actually contain higher amounts of hydroxytyrosol. So the Greeks had it right again with the Greek black olives. Uh, and I know I'm just saying this because I'm partially Greek myself. Uh, but no, uh, what I'm saying is these are, if you're going to choose olives and if you like black olives, not everybody does, but if you like black olives, generally the darker, uh, the, uh, plant, the more potent, the, uh, antioxidants, polyphenols, um, different types of, uh, phytochemicals in there that do that. And this also is true, not every time, but this is mostly true in, uh, with whole black olives too, with higher, not only higher amounts of hydroxytyrosol, but about six other different phytochemicals. So enjoy your food, uh, and keep in moderation, make sure you're choosing the right, uh, right sources, the right amounts. Uh, for your level of health and activity. And yes, if you have advanced disease states, do talk to a plant-based doctor, try to get those oils out of your uh, dietary pattern until you can turn your health around. I hope you enjoyed this. I know this is a controversial subject, but I just wanted to bring a little bit more um, flexibility and nuance and understanding to the subject because I hear a lot of people just throw up the dogmatic, I can't do oils. And, and I, I, I'm like, okay, let's not be, you know, we, we say when you see a bad person and you look at the color of their skin or the type of clothing they're wearing and you make a judgment about everybody that wears that type of clothing, that's called bigotry. And I don't want to see us doing bigotry uh, amongst our food either, which is all protein is bad. All fats are bad. All anything is bad in nutrition because it's simply just not true. There's no absolutes in, uh, um, in, in the dietary and nutritional. So let's, let's stop making those sweeping absolutes and let's, let's do the right job of explaining the nuances, um, the many different levels of potential health benefits and potential um, disease causing uh, situations for people. Let's give them the real truth. Let's take the time to explain this like I'm doing, and I hope it inspires other people. Again, I am not an advocate of oils. That is not the intention of this. I was talking about hydroxytyrosol, powerful antioxidant, anti-inflammatory that's in olive oil. And I want people to know this information so that they, you can make the best decision for yourself. I applaud you if you're uh, no oil. I applaud you if you're making better choices, getting away from animal products and, and choosing more plant products. And I applaud you if you're choosing a better plant oil that may be uh, olive oil as opposed to some of the other oils that do not have the health benefits with the hydroxytyrosol. I hope you enjoyed this. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback on this. I hope I was careful enough not to push too many buttons, though I'm sure some people will uh, be a little bit argumentative about it because I know it's a subject that's got uh, a lot of people up in arms. I totally get why Esselstein is doing it. He's passionate about saving lives and he's really wanting to see his patients succeed and pull through and have life changing. I applaud him for that. Oh my like, God, that's a beautiful thing. But I think we can tend to get a little overzealous in making statements that are blanket statements for everyone that may not be as true or may not be the whole truth. And I just wanna make sure that there's some balance out there representing all sides of the conversation so that more people can make the best decisions for them in their own unique individual circumstance. So I hope this is good information for you. If you enjoyed it, please share, give it a thumbs up, give it a like so that uh, we can get more people um, learning about some of these other things. As always, every Thursday at 4 p.m., I'm gonna be bringing you the latest in research. I've got some great, uh, great uh, guests coming on too as well uh, that will share their uh, perspective stories from how plant-based uh, foods and nutrition has affected their performance in sport as well as overall health. Thanks for joining me in this. Have a great day.